Blog Talk Radio. Well, welcome to another episode of Working the Web to Win. I'm your host, Carl Weiss. With me in the studio here is Hector the Connector Cisneros. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about a, a topic. It's, we actually call it Bringing Down the Bitcoin Bandits, but it uh, involves a uh, website called Silk Road. And in fact, I think this is only the second time where we've actually covered one illegal event online. Last time was the Chinese hack attack. Right. So it's pretty got to be pretty serious for us to devote an entire episode to it. But this is really serious stuff. Well, not only that, it, it, it it's involved with the whole, you know, international world currency type of thing that's going on that's evolving on the internet now. And, and the other thing is what they call refer to as the dark net. Right, the dark net. Right, the the darker side of the internet, which most people don't really pay much attention to. I know before we get real deep into the show, I'd like to give the callers a call-in number. Sure. Go ahead. So for our guests online, it's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and YouTube. Not to mention workingweb.com. And Club W Cubed, and no. Social Slam Dunk. We're, and we're pretty much everywhere. <laughs> when I started reading your article, I mean, it would really amaze me, the gall of these people, I mean, and but more importantly, how long it took them to, to bust this place. I mean, it took them more than a year to figure out even where the server was yeah. and what they were doing. And that's because... Well, it's because of it, this is exactly the reason they set it up this way. All right? The whole point was is they, their actual USP, their unique selling proposition was you can do whatever you want online and nobody can trace you back to where yeah. you started from or even who you are, what you are, or, or with using Bitcoin you can't even trace the money. The right? money. You can't follow the money, which is typically what law enforcement uses to crack down on illegal enterprises. Right. They, they actually used you, uh, the government's own uh, router software mm -hmm. that actually masks wherever they come from. Yeah. They use uh, the pretty good encryption for emails so that you can't look mm -hmm. at the emails. And then they use Bitcoin, which is untrackable money. That's right. So the whole the whole mechanism made it so that they could easily sell crack cocaine, heroin. Well, that was the funny guns, thing. I mean, when, I mean, it really actually, what the hell it was. was actually, I, I, have, I have an actual graphic of their website. And, you know, it, look, it looks to me, everybody calls it the eBay of, of, of the underworld. But, but really, I think it looks more like Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but when you look at this thing, and I mean, it's just like right in your face, right up on top, it says drugs. So what do you want? Do you want ecstasy, opioids? Right. you want cannabis? They'll even sell you precursors, you know, if you're looking to cook your own. Right. You know, uh, it, 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 what's what's really crazy is that this this website was actually going strong for two years. Right. It took the government two years to finally bring it to you know. And people have to understand it wasn't just drugs. No. Passports. That's right. Counterfeit. Well, here's products, another thing here. Forgery. <laughs> yeah. Anything you wanted, pretty Lab much. supplies. And this what is do what you need. Here's a scary thing. I read an article. I think it was in Forbes. One of them, where they're interviewing these people, and the guy says, you know. Gee, I'm really sorry for seeing that site to be gone because <laughs> I was really getting used to their prices and I started to trust them. So, <laughs> you know, that's sort of crazy when you think about it. It's kind of scary, huh? Yeah. Well, and the funny thing that's really scary is when, when you look at the, the, the kid, and basically he was a kid. Yeah, he's 29 years old. Yeah, he, now he's 29. He was like 27 <laughs> when he started it, you know what I mean? So, I mean, here he is a kid from Texas who came up with, you know, the idea for Silk Road. I mean, this this could be the kid lives next door. In, in fact, when when they finally busted him in San Francisco at the public library, by the way, right. of all places, that he was actually sharing a house with two other dudes, yeah, exactly. and they were they were as blown away as anybody else about when when this story hit the you know the news. Right, because the rent on the house was like twelve hundred dollars a month or something. <laughs> he didn't go out to eat. No, he wasn't exactly was very frugal. He was not guy. living life large. Right, by any means. You know, he was definitely staying under the radar. And considering he was making probably $20,000 a day or something That's like that. That's what they estimated, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the stories that I've read online, all the news feeds are saying that, that he, in fact, his he, he raked in about $60 million over the course of this enterprise. Right. And, and, and what was it, $4 million was still in his Bitcoin wallet, right. which the, the government sees right away. Yeah, and again, there's only so many Bitcoins in the world. So, I mean, when I was doing my research, a lot of it was I did on Bitcoin because I remember researching Bitcoin about a year ago, right. where it was this new emerging currency and it didn't rely on banks or anything like that. Well, in my opinion, you know, that that's the reason why this type of enterprise was possible. Right. Because of the fact that the coin of the realm was Bitcoins, which are encrypted, 
Right, encrypted and untrackable. They're, yeah, they're, basically it's an anonymous monetary right. transaction. Yeah, the I whole mean, this thing was made for contraband sites, right. okay? Well, the whole idea of Bitcoin, the, the original idea from the guy was, we could come up with a currency that can't be manipulated right. by banks, right. governments, speculators, speculators right. and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, on the face of it, when you look at the, the pluses of Bitcoin, it looks pretty cool. So, it's peer to peer. That means I'm going to send you money. You can send me money, and nobody can mess with us. I mean, there's no there's no middleman no middle in there. Man, right, exactly. Right. Um, there's minimal or very low processing fees. It's open source. It can be converted to pretty much any kind of currency. Yeah. So when you look at all those things that are pretty cool, yeah. but when you also start looking at it's untraceable. It's being used illegally a lot. Well, it's perfect yeah, for like drugs. I said, it's perfect for contraband. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely, any kind of contraband. Uh, but the other thing is, since it's all electronic, there's really no money there. And what I don't, what I don't like about it is, if there's no such thing as a system that can't be hacked. Right. There's no such system that can't be gamed. And yeah. several of the articles that I read in Mashable and several other places were talking about different things that had been gamed. And as a matter of fact, in October alone, 1.3 million dollars was stolen from Input IO, which is what that's not a bank; it's um, a repository of bitcoins. So somebody made off with 1.3 million dollars in Bitcoin money, which is money, money. Hey, well, okay. I mean, if, if the real <laughs> banks can get hacked, right. anybody can get right. hacked. I mean, they don't make they don't they don't talk about it a lot, but they're they're regularly getting dinged. Well, when when I was reading like the New Yorker and Forbes and all, they're yeah. talking about, you know, and these are the big money guys talking about it. You know, right. they're saying, well, that stuff can be used illegally. Well, U.S. <laughs> currency is used illegally, regularly. But that stuff can be hacked. Well, right. banks are hacked regularly. You know, when you look at all the drawbacks of Bitcoin, right? All every currency in the world has the exact same drawback. Sure. You know, except that they're not controlled by the central bank or the Fed or, or some Chinese government yeah. or some other thing like that. So well, in fact, one of the transactions that was made, which actually picked up by the, uh, the, the Feds, was a, a, there was a, a, a competitive site to Silk Road. And some dude went out and started trying to, you know, selling uh, like assault rifles <laughs> on this thing, you know, and he was getting paid in in Bitcoin. Bitcoins. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, when I was going through there, I found by accident a, a, an article on the guy who printed the first uh, metal gun. Right. You know, <laughs> because that's a, a we did an article. Yeah, on the three D printing. Months, yeah, the yeah. Pre, the three D printing. So yeah. he Amazing what you do with those. He did he did a three D printing uh -huh. of a nine eleven right uh, pistol. So wow. Anyway, I don't know. I think the whole thing, when you start looking at the whole Bitcoin currency thing, uh, there are a lot of really cool articles on that subject mm -hmm. alone. And the reason I think that's important for our listeners, because we're all about the Internet, is if there's a currency that's unique to the Internet, right? this is it. And it was actually spawned by Internet geeks. Absolutely. For Internet geeks who yeah. are sort of semi-anarchists when you think about it because they don't like banks, they yeah. don't like uh, governments and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, but you know who was their unwitting partner in crime to this whole venture? I don't know. The Department of Defense. <laughs> because they were basically right. using the same technology right. that the military uses to keep communications secret. So right. it's a technology called TOR. Yeah, they're, they're the onion router. Right, the onion router is what they use. Huh. They also use PGP, which is pretty good uh, protection. Protection, right. Uh, uh, which is that, an encryption algorithm. Uh, so that was, and again, this yeah. is like a fifth generation of that, yeah. so it's an even way yeah. harder to crack now. Yeah, but, but for the uninitiated, what TOR is, it's called the onion router, but it's not really one router. What it actually does is it goes out and it sets up a series of routers. In fact, when the FBI finally tracked these guys down, I mean, they had routers all over the damn planet. Right. Right. And what it does is it takes the message or Bitcoin transaction or whatever, and it breaks it down into packets, and it sends these packets all over the place. And unless you have the key to receive all the packets, you can't put the message back together. As a matter of fact, when when you go to uh, the Dread Private Roberts um, Twitter account, yeah. there are tweets on there that say, "Here are the, this week's packets." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you see all these <laughs> big long encryption numbers. Yeah. That people are being able to, to copy off of there and, and do whatever they're doing illegally. Well, so that's that's what it takes, you know. I, like I said, that's that was basically one of the selling points of Silk Road. You know, you could put anything that you want on there, and the feds couldn't trace you. Yeah. But it, as it turns out, the way they finally busted the ring was actually using a lot of that technology against them, because what they did, yeah, at least from what I've read, cause, you know, the FBI isn't going to exactly yeah, gonna tell, us what tell you what they did. But from, from what I, I gleaned from, from reading a lot of the news feeds and a lot of the blogs, 
is the fact that they went out and actually started to basically mirror their sites. Yeah. And they were getting people to place orders as though they were with the Silk Road site. That's how they finally started to get a handle on where they were, where the servers were located, and eventually they were able to crack the system. Well, one of the interesting things to me was this guy was starting to act like this was a regular oh, enterprise. Oh, yeah, he was, he was giving interviews for crying out loud to media. You know, I mean, that's the last thing you want to do when you're running a black market, you know, right. operation is to start giving, you know, the regular press interviews. But when the, but beyond that, he was also then ordering hits on people. Yeah, and ordering hits on the police themselves because right. they were. Well, I, well I, actually, one of the people that he ordered a hit on was was, was, was his FBI. administrator. Right. No, it was his administrator. Right. Uh, because what had happened was he, um, the FBI started leaning on the operation, of course, and, and like I said, because these guys were not set up in, like you know, Bahrain or they weren't right. set up in Rio de Janeiro. I mean, they were right here in this right. country. It, it didn't take too long for them to finally get a beat on somebody in the operation. And instead of trying to lean on uh, Ulbricht, who is the guy, Ross Ulbricht, who is right. the actual quote unquote alleged kingpin of this operation, they went to his second in command, his right hand man, and kind of put the muscle on him and said, look, you know, you can either do a you know, boatload of time you can, you can roll on or you can roll. <laughs> and that's what happened. So, of course, Ulbricht starts hearing that, you know, his, his basically the guy who has the keys to the vault right. is talking to the feds. And according to, you know, the reports, he offered eighty thousand dollars to take him out. Well, they're gonna. They, one of the things that they arrested him on was attempted murder. So. Well, that's what it was yeah. all about. Well, they also, you know, put a lot of things. Uh, you know, also indicted him for drug, uh, drug, drug running, drug. Uh, money laundering, right. and a lot of other things. You know, so it's it's going to be interesting when when this thing finally, you know, hits the courts. You know, I I see all this these major internet transactions that are going on, and again, my biggest worry is. This seems like it's perfect for contraband and, and, and rolling money and doing all kinds of stuff like that. But the reality is a lot of big wigs in the government and a lot of big mm -hmm. wigs in industry right. are, are not, they're not complaining that this stuff exists. What they're saying is, well, this is how it should be used and this is how, because <laughs> the reality, they're going to jump on this at some point in time. And I'm going to say this on the show today, yeah. that my prediction for 2014 is this is going to be even a bigger player next year and, and well, by 2020, this is going to be a major well, thing. Know, I mean, the FBI is doing high fives or anything. You know, kudos right. for them actually cracking down on Silk Road. But as soon as they went dark, right. competitors so, started popping up like weeds. You know, in fact, in my blog, I say, have they really killed the snake or have they just turned it right. into a mini-headed hydra? Well, no, we know for a fact that Silk Road 2.0 is already out. I mean, it's already out. I tried to nail it down. I tried to find it where I could go in and, and look at every it. address that yeah. I, I keyed in, it wouldn't come up. But yeah. uh there's you don't know the secret password. There must be three or four dozen articles <laughs> talking about the new Silk Road. So well, and, there. and there are other wannabes. You know, there are other competitors that are out there already. Like yeah. I said, this the one that was talking about the selling assault rifle that was not on Silk Road. It's on yeah. a competitor well, site. Well, my warning for for those people who want to be in e-commerce mm -hmm. and they're they're looking at Bitcoin and so on, I would say that there's three things you really need to watch out for. First of all. Don't put your money in bitcoins because again, if, if you can interrupt the internet, you can in interrupt your bitcoins. <laughs> well, plus eventually the <laughs> government might just decide that that's an illegal form right. of, you know, of, of, of currency, uh, right? Currency, and then then you're really you're holding paper. Right. You know, like look look at the guys that were were doing. Remember the uh, online poker sites? Right. And they didn't shut down the online poker sites because those were all located overseas. What they did was they went in and they confiscated everybody's chips. Yeah. So if you had chips that were sitting in there, you know, you went one day you had ten thousand dollars in the kitty, next day you went in, it was gone. And that's what I'm saying here is that same thing could these happen. These things are Bitcoin. in these little right. wallets, you know, and again they could disappear in the blink of an eye. As a matter of fact, there are also things that can make them disappear. I mean, natural disasters, sure, electrical grid going down, the internet grid being attacked. I mean, sure. there's any number of different things. I have two rules that I always look at when uh, anything on the internet. The first one is if you can't understand it, don't do it. The second one is never jump on the bandwagon because leading edge is also the bleeding edge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are the two rules I always live by. If you want safety and stuff like that, go buy gold, go buy diamonds. Yeah, now, now, <laughs> now, can you explain that to the people that are working on the ushealthcare.gov site? <laughs> that's the other one. You know, again, it's a bleeding edge. You, know, you, you want to go and bleed a little bit? That's one of the places you can go. Well, I, I know in the article. There's a lot of links for a lot of different cool things. Uh, a couple of articles that I wanted to tell people that I thought they ought to look at. Of course, you can go to Bitcoin.org and you right. can read their, look at their videos and so on. Uh, Mashable has a really good set of articles. 
um, that are on the subject. Oh, yeah. so I've got an article right here from Forbes. I mean, this is this is making the rounds. Right. This is it's big not, time. Right. It's a big deal. It's the New York and New York Times. I mean, it's in every major article, I mean, every major magazine that you can imagine that's out there. They're talking about this. Um, I know that in in England there was a big robbery for bitcoins. This is like the twelfth time that bitcoins have been robbed. Bitcoins you know, big, got bit. Yeah, bitcoins. <laughs> people got bit having bitcoins. Is what happened. Yeah. You know, so yeah, there was lots of big robberies that have been going on. And again, this one in October for one point three million dollars. It's like it's in the top fifteen robberies of all times. Wow. That's how much money it was that they made off with. And and the guy goes on the web and says, okay, on the forum and says, I have bad news for you. And puts a little frowny face. He says, we just got hit for uh, one point three million dollars. <laughs> That's how he informs his clients <laughs> in a forum. <laughs> like, that sounds like the old Richard Pryor joke right. when he got a call from his broker and, and and Richard Pryor says, well, how's how's my accounting? He goes, well, let me put it this way. I'm the broker, and you are the brokey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole idea that the stuff, and again, we have money in the bank and stuff like that, and you, yeah. look, you go online and you look at the thing, and what happens if the bank makes a mistake? Yeah. I remember, remember one time I deposited $15,000. Yeah, there's no $1. FDIC behind Bitcoins. <laughs> well, even if there is, I mean, I deposited $15,000 check one time, yeah. went back to the bank the next week and they say, you don't have any money in your account? I was like, what do you mean I don't have any money in my account? <laughs> and if I didn't have that little piece yeah, of paper that said yeah. I deposited $15,000, yeah, it would have been okay. And how yeah. many people today make deposits, they take a picture of their check and deposit it that way and all? Yeah. And again, if you have no proof, Yeah, but, but I mean, the point is, if, if, you, if your banker went under the moniker Red Pirate Roberts, would you would you put, put that check in there? <laughs> would, you, would you seriously think about it? <laughs> I know that, you know... The well, that would be a bad moniker because remember all the problems we had with the banks not too long ago. Yeah. Well, I were, think they, they were all well. hoisting the Jolly Rogers. Yeah. Well, they were. I mean, in reality, when you look at what the... What they did was they, they went essentially bankrupt and then the government bailed them out. And we gave them, I don't know how many trillion dollars, which is crazy. Yeah. Because now we got to pay that back. That's right. And the banks don't have to pay nothing. That's right. I mean, that's so... I understand why they're they're anarchist type people and, and why there are a lot of people who really like this whole idea of the bitcoins and so on because again it, it removes some of these very powerful middlemen that, that really have a lot of people under their thumbs um one of the things i noticed when i when i was doing a search I, you know you hear people say hashtag this and hashtag that if you do a, a search on hashtag um silk road mm -hmm. it brings up huge number of things. Oh I mean, yeah, well, huge, so far huge isn't just, just this particular site. There were a lot of other sites that happened to use that same name. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. There's a big confusion, because there's one, there's an HR site that, that's called <laughs> Silk Road. Yeah, I mean, I'm All sure. of a sudden, their, their, their site got really popular. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, again, people you just have to be careful when you're we're out there. Uh, the, the Dread Pirate Roberts, which is not, it's actually Dread Pirates SR on Twitter, he has 3,256 followers, and he's only following 19 people. <laughs> now, my understanding is, when the site, when, when he was busted, yeah, when it went dark, somebody else took up, it over. That's right. The, the, the guy that's running 2.0 took the same moniker. So, the Dread Pirate Roberts. So, but I want to know is how he passed in the username and password. <laughs> 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 so he could get in there and do that stuff. Um, I want to make sure that we uh, talk about our sponsors, because uh, we're about... 20 minutes into the show. Mm -hmm. I want to thank our sponsors, Tub King and Senior Bath, and also uh, Bayi Cigarettes, who uh, keep the lights going. Yeah, they're, they're e-cigs, not, not cigarette cigarettes. E-cigs. That's right. yeah, an easier way to sm quit smoking, actually, is yeah. the way I look at it. So. I wish um, I had that option when I was trying to quit smoking right. years back. And, of course, Tub King and Senior Bath, who have some of the coolest bathtubs. I mean, the, the claw tub baths that they have are amazing. And, of course, if you're a senior... Yeah, they got Nothing the walk-ins. Like the walk-ins are really cool, and they got the hydrotherapy. Yeah, I thought it was interesting in their little video when they explained why the door opens in instead of out, so you don't accidentally empty the, the bathtub, bathtub all over the bathroom <laughs> floor. <laughs> Tidal wave! Yeah. Get, your, get your surfboard out there, right? Next week, I know we're going to be talking about the smartest, smartest guys in the room. Smartest guys yeah. in the room. And actually, the, the thing is, we're, we're, you know, a lot of these things that you see online are created by some really smart guys. Right. You know, and, and of course, you know, we all know about the guys that, that are involved in, in not only the Internet, but computers like, you know, Steve Jobs and things like that. But, but most people don't remember 
the fact that Steve Jobs got fired from Apple because after they started working with right. the, the you know the original Apple II and things like that, his next big concept was called Next, which the next step for him was out the door. <laughs> uh, no, so, he, he stumbled a little bit when they came out the, with the Lisa also. Yeah. And so a bunch of people jumped all over him. And like I said, the, the thing is most people don't realize that, that some of these guys that really hit a home run, the next time they get up to bat, they strike out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about some of the things that have really been kind of cool, some of the things that are way out there, and even some of the things right now, because, you know, Google is into a lot of different things. They have their thumb in a lot of different pies. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, talk, we talked last week about the Google barge, our barges in, uh, in San Google Francisco. Barges, they got the Google cars that drive themselves now. Uh -huh. they got the Google the glasses. Blimp. You know, <laughs> Google's got his hands, and I mean, I'm waiting for Google Food. Yeah, it's, you know? <laughs> it's probably coming. Before the you even printed know it, food, you know? you know, who knows what they're uh, doing. Exactly, the it's 3D printing. You can just, you know, place your order in it, and it prints out your, uh, you know, your your favorite uh, flavor of the of the day. It's going to happen. But but I mean, the thing is, we're going to talk about some of the things that are, that are obviously make sense, and some of the things that are just way out there. You know, so. Uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, conversation because we're going to have a lot of ground to cover. We're going to cover not only what's happening now, but what's happened over the you know the the, the years right. in between. Yeah, and again for our listeners who are new to the show, uh, on the blog, which is working the web to win, dot blogspot dot com, mm -hmm. there's a notes page, and you can go in there and click on the notes page, mm -hmm. and each show is listed by date, and you can find all the research that we did for the show. Yeah. Of course, for our Club WQ members, they can go into the Dropbox and find all that information plus a whole bunch more and I, I actually took a lot of the pictures that they did for Silk Road mm -hmm. and put them in there so people could see the, the website I mean it's amazing that website was like eBay for drugs and guns and you name oh, it I know it's crazy I mean they got all these people's uh, passports right get your own uh, you know yeah. forged passports that yeah, well, kind of stuff. like I said there was actually a listing in there that says forgeries I put in a whole bunch of other articles that are related that I thought you might be interested in for example uh, if you believe in Bitcoin, you should never buy anything in Bitcoin. That's sort of a weird <laughs> article. <huh? laughs> and there's several wikis and stuff like that out there. Uh, so one of the things that I noticed is Bitcoin actually acts exactly like any other currency. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's skyrocketing up. I mean, when it first came out, it was like you know 50 cents or something like that, and then it went to like two or three dollars, and now it's like 20 dollars a Bitcoin and this kind of stuff. And it's actually being affected by governmental intervention because again china is buying up a bunch of these bitcoins and is driving up the price yeah. which is the whole point was it just not supposed to be able to be manipulated right, yeah, by anybody yeah, yeah. oops oops you know so in fact they call it bitcoin mining right yeah and the whole mining process will blow your mind if you read this stuff so um there's several articles on silk road in here uh about the the hack that happened for the 1.3 million dollars uh what was the other one was yeah, that was a serious one. oops and here's the other one uh, 745,000 pounds hacked. Uh, why you should never store bitcoins on the internet? Well, it's oh, all on the internet. Where are you going to put them? <laughs> Can't put them in your pocket. Actually, there are little bitcoins that you can get. Oh, you really? feel like it's supposed to have the value <laughs> in them or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, the whole idea of the Bitcoin thing seems just a little bit strange to me. Well, like I said, that's that's what the world the World Wide Web revolves around, right? That's why we have World Wide Weird every now and then. I'm waiting to see somebody come out with a, a bartering site where you can trade chickens and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, they just have sure to. Sure, there isn't one there. Google <laughs> it. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have a studio of mine, I'd be googling it right now. So, um, I don't have any other biggies here. Do you have any announcements for other than the next week's show? No, no. I mean, basically, uh, that's you know that's what we're looking to talk about. Is you know next week is our like I said some of the things that have have gone big and some of the things that have flopped and, and some of the, the next wave concepts that, that a lot of the uh, your web entrepreneurs are, are starting to noodle around with. Because one of the ones that, that still blows my mind, and we've talked about this before, is the iWatch. Yeah. The Apple iWatch, which basically spawned an entire industry without actually hitting the street. Right. The iWatch isn't even out yet, and it, it's already got a Samsung competitor. Oh. And I'm waiting for them to sue Samsung because they came out with, with the, the, the watch, Samsung yeah. watch first. Yeah, well, they, but they want them to make some more money first. Right. That's when they're going to get in with the lawsuits. They haven't, they haven't made enough yet. Right. You know, I, mean, I, I can see it happening in the industry. You know, you just put this idea out there, you let everybody else run with it, and then you, you hammer them with the lawsuit, and that's how you make your money. Right, because they would have filed their patents first. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, you know, and it's the same thing. I mean, I'm sure that there's a bunch of the Japanese companies have done that. In fact, the Japanese are renowned for filing patents for products that they have no intention of building, right. just so they've got the Well, the Japanese, actually, there were several Japanese 
I type watches. Yeah. When we did our show on the I type watch, I remember finding a dozen of them. They were like 10 years old or something like that. They had been out for a while. And just nobody was using them because really the infrastructure was up there. Right. To be able to make that a real viable thing. And that's that's what makes the, the web go round. Yeah. You know, as, as you get these concepts and, and somebody decides to capitalize on it, but a lot of times the concepts, the guy that actually originates the concept never actually puts it into, into play. You know, it was the one that uh, Elon Musk came up with recently. Was it Hyperloop? No. You heard, didn't hear about Hyperloop? No, I haven't seen that. What, what the Hyperloop was, it was basically the concept for the old TV series, which was called Earth 2, where they had the underground right. tunnel that would shoot the the train at like hypersonic speed because it was all in a vacuum yeah, and it basically he kind of resurrected that idea and hey, I don't know if he put it out as a goof or uh, you know as a, as a gag or whatever but all of a sudden people picked up on it because well he's Elon Musk you know he's the guy that, that, that sends the dragon spacecraft into space and you know he's the guy that, that does the uh, the Tesla car and all this stuff so you know if he just makes a joke all of a sudden it starts going around the world and people took him seriously and he's and he's and afterwards he's like it's people out now trying to make tunnels. That well, yeah, they said they're training to China. It's going to happen, you know. You just, all you have to have is enough notoriety, and you, you just you just sneeze, and everybody says, "Bless you." I mean, that's just the way it is today. I mean, that, that's the way the world is wired now. I just want to remind our listeners out there that you can always dial into the show at two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. It's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. Of course, you can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and YouTube. Working the web, the clubwcube.com and slam social slam dot us. So if we're at W squared media group, uh, W squared media group. Actually, we probably got three or four other ones out there too. But. And we got to thank our our producer. Producer is yeah. what we're Natural we'll Dave Frank. Yep, he's in here with us. He, he gets to have all the fun with this stuff after we're done because we've got about three cameras on this. <laughs> so <laughs> he's not getting any sleep for a while. So I'm going to say until next week. Keep working the web to win. Mm-hmm.